Good not lord. Is that smashed? Equal, and not every single oh surface my god, it's cracked, it's shattered. The, white paint, the, black the laser tech content space is full of great tricks and hacks for how to get the best out of your laser engraving. So I decided to take a dive down the rabbit hole and see which ones work and which ones might be over-promising and under-delivering. And we're going to start off with, I discovered the easiest way to do glass engraving with a diode laser. Hey, they've got a jig. That's very smart. Do that, 100%. Jigs will save you a ton of time and accuracy. It looks like this person's actually 3D printed theirs. What is that, chalk marker? Yeah. Okay, I think I know where this is going. Yeah, there it is. So, we are covering the surface of the glass in some kind of black paint. I have seen a lot of videos of people doing this. Diode lasers, the wavelength for them is too long on these laser systems and it goes straight through the glass rather than actually leaving a mark behind. In order to mark glass, you need a wavelength that's really, really short, right? So UV is the best solution for glass. But the reason why everyone isn't just going, hey, here's my UV laser and here it is marking some glass is because particularly at this kind of level, UV lasers are really expensive. You know, they're two, three times more expensive than a kind of equivalent diode or fiber laser. So what they're doing here is they are covering the surface with something like acrylic paint and that can react with the diode laser and when it does, it generates heat and that heat then transfers onto the glass and leaves you with your mark. In theory, it works. In practice, you have to make sure that that paint, whatever you use, is incredibly evenly spread because if it's thicker in some areas or non-existent in some areas then you're going to have a mark that gets really patchy because you're relying on that paint to react with the glass so for an individual or a hobbyist i would say yeah go for it 100 it's a very very cost effective solution to mark glass if you're an etsy store or if you're running an operation where this has to have a certain level of scalability once those orders start coming in you're gonna really struggle. If every time you do a glass, you have to paint it, let it dry, put it in the machine, do the mark, it's gonna take a very, very long time. And it's not gonna produce very consistent results because it's really hard to paint something exactly the same every time. I am excited to see how it turns out. Whoa, there it goes. There it goes. Yeah, I think they're gonna try and clean it before we can really see what it looks like. Although that raises another interesting point, actually. If every single time, that you do one of your marks, you have to clean the stuff off just to see if it worked. You can't just change some settings or, or do a cleanup pass. You have to then reapply your paint and let it dry and go through the whole process again. Plus, even with a jig, if you put it back in half a millimeter off of where it was, you're gonna get really blurry engraving because basically you're gonna get, it will have sort of marked slightly offset and you'll get this weird ghosting look. It's not bad at all, actually. That's gone on a lot better than some of the other videos I've seen. Still is a little bit patchy though. Yeah, you can see, if you look at the top bit, you can see where it hasn't quite taken. That could actually be a 3D issue. This glass slightly tapers upwards. So the focus height will have been set to the middle of the glass. And then when the laser gets to the bit where it gets closer to the scan head, then the focal height would have been thrown off. The laser didn't have enough energy to react with the paint because the focal height was wrong. So that could be another reason why it's a little bit patchy. A deep relief engraving. I love these. The only issue with doing a deep relief engraving with a plotter laser, which is one of the ones on a track that's kind of moving back and forth, as opposed to a galvo laser, which is one that has mirrors inside and those mirrors deflect the laser beam, is you do get this kind of horizontal streak effect. Left to right, the laser is really consistent, right? Because it's always on and it fires from left to right. But Every single time it needs to move up and down, no matter how good a motor you have to control where that plotter track is moving, basically moving across and then down a little tiny bit, and then across and then down a little tiny bit. It looks a bit like an old CRT television. The lines from left to right are perfectly crisp, but you can see little gaps between the lines if you look all the way down. It looks really cool, but just food for thought if you're considering between plotter or galvo. Um, if you don't do the size, I would go Galvo. 10 laser engraving secrets that the experts don't want you to know. We got an order for 36 wine glasses for a wedding. That's so cool. So they got a custom job and then they're walking through their process. That is fantastic that they are being so open with how they did this. Use a rotary tool. Since it is a cylindrical item. As the glass tapers, if it doesn't rotate, then you will get a different focal height as it moves across hey, the curvature of the Thank glass. you, we're covering the science, yes. 
But that's the problem. They explained it perfectly. Focal height is going to be an issue from side to side. This is one of the reasons why we wax lyrical about our 3D scan heads is because they don't have that problem. They can change focus from side to side. So it r removes the need for a rotary for something like a logo going across the front of a glass. Like this. And now you're getting a nice tight level surface right. and consistent. This is an issue with some of these smaller systems. I'm not saying that they are being unsafe. I don't think they are. I am sure that they have got protective eyewear. I am sure that they are making sure to step back away from the machine. Because you need a rotary for it to mark 3D, because most of them don't have the 3D scan heads, the rotaries are too big for them. So they don't fit under the door. So you have to operate the thing with the door open. Laser radiation, A, is very dangerous. It will damage your eyes, it will damage your skin. It doesn't just hit whatever you're marking and then be like, okay, cool, I'm done now. It bounces around. Running it with laser radiation blasting all over the room and hitting you does a lot more harm than you would think. Number seven, run a material test pattern. Good not Lord, is that smashed? Equal, and not all lasers are created equal. Oh my God. So we did a bunch of these because we did one for every single oh surface God, coating that cracked, we used. It's cracked, it's shattered. For the white paint, the black tempered okay. paint, uh, which is this, the chalk What kind paint, of laser are they the using? Metallic spray. People go on and on about those test pattern squares. The problem is you can only change two variables. They say, I want power along one axis and speed along another axis, and then they let it do its thing, and then they go, look at that, that's the best combination of power and speed. Lasers also have control over pulse frequency, pulse width, hatch angle, hatch size. There's quite a few other variables that have a massive impact on your laser engraving that these test card things just don't cover. By only adjusting power and speed, you might find a way of getting the perfect mark, but in a way that takes 20 minutes every single time. Whereas if you were to change something like your hatch, you might get the perfect mark in two minutes rather than 20. Like the differences can really be that big. This order was 36. I hope their next order is 360 or 3,600, right? And when that happens, saving one minute per part or 10 minutes per part is a huge impact on the profitability of the business. Sure, your laser engraved surface is level. We talk about consistent yes. burn throughout your design. Thank you, Make very sure smart. You so not only left to right, but also top to bottom. You can see that we've put the level here and oh, where we'll be engraving is actually- The glasses they're using, the circumference of the glass near the bottom and the circumference of the glass near the top are actually very, very similar, which means as wine glasses go, it's a relatively flat surface. What happens when you get a wine glass that is shaped like that? That's why 3D is important, is because 3D, it doesn't matter in what direction or in what shape or in what way the material bends towards and away from the laser scan head. It doesn't care because it will adjust, adjust the focus height as is needed. Super cool video. I love the fact they took the time to do this. I really do. Cool. Well, I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Be excellent to yourselves. Be excellent to each other. See you in the next one.